The financial crisis was a big event in this country and uh, in much of the world. And students come to the uh, particularly macroeconomics course wanting to know about it. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to write a chapter on this. I didn't want to just write little snippets in different chapters uh, about the financial crisis. I wanted a story from beginning to end. And what I found is that students are very receptive to this. They, they, they can many times, when they hear things in the news and they hear t people talking about them, uh, they think that's important. And if I'm a, a student in economics, I really should know something about that. And it also gave me a, an, a wonderful opportunity to bring in a lot of macroeconomics. We talked about monetary policy and interest rates and the Fed. We talked about some politics in terms of the Community Reinvestment Act. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, we talked about leverage and uh, uh, balance sheets. So uh, the financial crisis was in some sense a good backdrop for all these things that are important to talk about in, in, in macroeconomics. And like I say, it, students wanted to know. They wanted to know what, it, what was the cause or causes and what were the effects, what were the proposed solutions. In this edition of the book, the 11th, I, I have a, a, a new chapter, and it's a unique chapter that helps students see how economic theories are, are, are built. M many times in uh, a principal's text, and, in, uh, and, and I think most principal's texts, we present the material as sort of a finished product. Here's uh, the Keynesian theory, here's the monetarist theory, here's the new classical theory, here's the theory of the firm, uh, here's the theory of cost and production. Uh, but they, students don't really see how those theories are formulated. What leads to that particular theory being developed? We take the students sort of into the economic kitchen and show them how the theory is, is made. So we, we start off with a question, uh, then we build a theory step by step to try to answer that question. We pull forth the predictions based on that theory and then we go out and we try to show students how you might go about testing those predictions. So I think for the first time students can not only see a finished product, but they can see how the product is made and what that product is, is of course the theory that is basically developed to answer certain particular questions that don't have obvious answers. <laughs>